Universal Studios Hollywood is a great little park with tons of fantastic rides and shows. Today on Theme Park Wizard, we're going to rank all of them from worst to best, and be sure to put your own rankings down below for all the attractions at Universal Studios Hollywood. There are 13 rides and attractions at Universal Studios Hollywood, and we're going to rank them again from worst to best, starting with number 13. The worst attraction to park, at my opinion, is Super Silly Funland, and that comprises just the whole land. It's a kid's land, so it's again, it's great for what it is, which is an area for kids. The water park is fantastic to cool off in the summertime, for really for everyone, but the kids love to run through it all year long. And the only ride is a very slow Dumbo-like spinner ride called Super Swirly Funland, which goes again very slow, but does offer fantastic views of the San Fernando Valley. Next at 12 is Kung Fu Panda. This is a fantastic ride to cool off and relax, especially again in the summertime, but it's just the 40, 40 theater replaced Shrek 4D, and they upgraded the theater, and it looks absolutely gorgeous, and they really put some nice projection mapping effects, and they've make, made the seats much smoother. So overall, it's a good experience, but it's just the 40 theater, so it does not offer too much more than other attractions on this list, which we'll see coming up. Number 11. It's Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. I love the IP, which is actually why this ride's at number 11, but it's still pretty low because it's just a simulator. This and the next ride are just simulators. This is just a less intense simulator than the other simulator, which is at number 10 here. But yeah, Despicable Me is fantastic. The pre-shows, though, are just too long for me. They're just so long. There's two of them, and they're it just it just seems like they're forever, which is a little bit disappointing. I get that there's only two theaters in the show, is like five minutes so it just seems like you're standing there forever which does suck i do love the ip though but um i'm glad they got rid of the 3d glasses because i don't like 3d at all and 3d on rides sucks so i'm glad that this and harry potter got rid of the 3d glasses which put this even higher on my list than it could have been but the graphics are dated it's pretty a, a decently old attraction about eight or so years old at least eight years old and you can, they haven't really updated the, uh, uh, updated the graphics and the vehicles do not have much motion to them because it is a children's ride number 10 is that second simulator i was talking about it's the simpsons ride this ride is much more intense but also kind of oh it's using the back to the future ride system so this one uh has just an just feels older it's much more jerkier it is also more intense more intense of a ride system i do love the ip i like the simpsons ip more than i do the despicable me and the minions this pre-show it's not long, but it's claustrophobic. I am a claustrophobic person. You get in this small, tiny room where the ceiling, my head almost touches the ceiling watching the pre-show because the building itself which is very old. But the ride, in my opinion, is more fun. And the Simpsons are funny, so they have just some funny gags as well. And they even have, um, you know, Disney owns Simpsons now, but they do have some some funny uh, ma takes making fun of Disney and just drawing like Pirates of the Caribbean into small roles on the ride. So it's pretty cool. The ride, uh, the ride building itself is structurally out of date. Um, it really it has to be demolished, and it will be in the future. So it, it and you know, if there's a big earthquake, it can definitely put some cracks in the building. Don't worry, it, it won't. That probably won't happen. But yeah, that just goes to show how old the building is. But the Simpson ride itself is the IP is pretty good. I just wish it was replaced by something else. Or the Simpsons had a nice dark ride somewhere else in the park. Alrighty. Moving on to number nine. Number nine is the first ride on this track that ha or on this um, ride or list that has a track. That's right. On the rest are theaters or simulators, but this ride has a track. It's um, it's a motion-based simulator type of thing, but it's on a track. And the Transformers is just again all screens, which is why it's so far down on the list. But the ride building is really really cool. It's actually two stories. I never realized this until this year, actually, that the building is two stories and you go up and down an elevator to go from the second level and there's actually these giant screens. So you don't even realize you're lifting, like you're rising or falling. It's not like a drop, but it's just a just means of transportation. So it's really cool that that is happening. But unfortunately, the ride is 3D. And like I said earlier, I don't like 3D attractions, um, but it does help. This ride is, does go somewhere. It's not just a simulator, so that helps. But I definitely don't like 3D, 3D attractions, and I just don't like that it's just all screens, basically. There's not even, like, one animatronic. There's a static figure at the end of Megatron, but that's it. So that's why that is number nine on my list, and I do hope it gets rethemed or torn down soon. Next up on the list is 
Flying with Hippogriff. It's pretty neat, unique to Universal Hollywood because it's the only outdoor roller coaster at the park so far until Fast and Furious joins the party next year or in 2025. Yeah, it's the only outdoor coaster and it's been like that since 2016. The coaster itself though is very short, it's only 35 seconds long, but because everything else so far on this list was a simulator or a 3D type of Transformers ride, this is uh, nice and refreshing because it's just a roller coaster, it's a small roller coaster, but it does have some kind of intense elements, especially for small children um, in the way it was designed. It's very short, but you also get some fantastic views of the valley as well in the rest of the theme park on this very short 35 second roller coaster. I just wish it was longer, but it, it does have actually an animatronic too, so it's pretty nice. All right, now we have made it to our one and only show on the list, and that's Waterworld. Waterworld is a fantastic show. It's a 25-minute long stunt show, and it's constantly rated as the top, one of the top-rated theme park shows in the country, and the top-rated show, well, really the only show, but when there's multiple shows at Universal Studios Hollywood, it was the top-rated show at that park as well. Um, it's really just action-packed from start to finish. Even the pre-show is action-packed and very interactive. They squirt you with water and get you wet. And at the end, you have a amazing seaplane that launches from backstage and launches into the audience, gets the whole front row or front section wet. And it just is, it's really just a sight to see. Definitely a not-to-be-missed attraction when you're at the park. Next one is a... It's going to be a tough one. So, uh, I don't want... Don't dislike it. I think the studio tour is okay, but I know it's a lot of people's favorite attractions, so I know a lot of people have this number one, and I'm sure this is the point where our list, if they haven't already, will certainly divulge and disagree. A lot of people probably put this in the top three. It's my number five, because as an annual pass holder, it gets a little bit stale, but I totally, totally get a tourist or someone who doesn't come too often, or just a movie buff who rises to you to her all the time or multiple time multiple times a day and just loves it again yeah, i totally get it in fact you can see the studio to around kind of changes each time based on what's filming and what's not and if something is filming you can go ahead and potentially see an actor and the actor may come and greet you and wave to you and shake your hand as and people have recorded like george clooney and ben affleck and all these great people just walk around the set because you go on this a real working movie studio so that's something that really cannot happen anywhere else and this is the ride that started it all. This started the Universal Studios Hollywood Experience the theme park and the, all the other Universal's um, theme parks around the world. And you, I actually made a history video on this. I'll link it up top. Definitely go check that out because it's a very fascinating history. It is definitely an iconic ride at the park. And it's a big piece of history. So definitely go check that out. During the modern day studio tour, it's about 60 minutes. And you get to go through... A special uh, all these sound stages see how special effects are made and done and all these actual movie sets that have been used in movies and TV shows and just see how their effects work and it's really pretty interesting especially if you have not done it ever in your lifetime at number five is the Secret Life of Pets that's right Secret Life of Pets is Hollywood's only dark ride and it just opened a couple of years ago it's beautiful beautiful from the inside and out gorgeous gorgeous New York street type structure and the queue is not a traditional queue the queue um, they don't have like stanchions or switchbacks, at least in the indoor portion of the queue. The furniture guides you and you just go through each character's apartment and you uh, uh, get in your box and the ride uses facial recognition, facial recognition technology to allow you to become a pet, become a dog. And the whole storyline is you want to get adopted, say so you follow Snowball's crazy plan, do a whole bunch of shenanigans and go to the pet store and then you get adopted and you encounter 64 animatronics throughout the queue and ride the whole way and it's just really nice it's such a cool dark ride uh you definitely have to go ahead and experience it uh, it does use virtual line though but not if you go in the first hour of the day or in the evening time next up is universal hollywood's newest attraction mario kart mario kart bowser's challenge is an ar ride so not a 3d ride i like the ar stuff it's really cool it blends real sets and um they're like real physical sets and plus augmented reality technology and plus it's a game all the points go right to your app if you have the power up band but if not you can still play the game and compete with everyone in your car which really increases its rewritability and if you're a gamer you're gonna love it because it's just so much fun also if you're very competitive you're gonna love it too the ride itself in the queue again draw dropping queue 
has beautiful animatronics as well as on the ride itself and has a really cool projection mapped uh, Bowser figure that is part of the grand finale as well as a rainbow robe. Just a fantastic attraction the sign will have this ride. Still not even a year old yet, still pretty new so I'll have long long lines but definitely wait no more you single rider because it is well worth the wait. One of the best rides in the park, I absolutely love it. At number 3 is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Another ride with a jaw dropping queue and you don't even need to ride the ride to see the queue. You can just ask for a castle walk and walk through Hogwarts Castle and see the talking pictures and all the cool animatronics and all the scenes from the movies and the scenes of Hogwarts Castle like uh, you know, the Great Hall, Dumbledore's um, office and much more. And on the ride itself, you'll encounter animatronic dragons, dementors, uh, and spiders. There's uh, a mix of screens and animatronics here, but you'll be on the bench on this Kuka arm system, and it makes it really unique because it adds some thrill to it, as well as your your legs will be hanging in the um, air, so it feels like you're flying really on a magical bench. So definitely, definitely check it out. It is a marquee e ticket attraction, not to be missed at the park. At number two is the park's second indoor roller coaster or second roller coaster it is an indoor roller coaster and it's revenge of the mummy this roller coaster is half dark ride and half coaster the dark ride segment includes screens water splashes on you and as well as mummy animatronics so it's pretty cool then it's in a relatively small building so you get launched from zero to 45 miles per hour and then you'll go ahead and in about two seconds by the way and you'll go forwards and backwards on the roller coaster park in almost complete darkness and then you get to enter the final room and you'll it gets all foggy and you spin around in complete darkness as well so definitely go ahead check that out it is one of the fastest rides the second fastest ride in the park and very very fun it's on the lower lot right next to Jurassic world transformers and mario kart speaking of Jurassic world as our winner that is the best ride in my opinion at universal studios hollywood especially after its redo from Jurassic park to Jurassic world Jurassic World has two massive animatronics, multiple animatronics, but two massive ones of a T-Rex and Indominus Rex fighting for you down your 84 foot drop. And that is the fastest ride at the park. It goes 50 miles per hour and includes iconic scenes from the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World franchise. Chris Pratt is there and Bryce Dallas Howard is there. And again, Blue, uh, Blue the dinosaur, Blue the raptor is there as well. Very, very fun. And it's really a good time impressive the latest and, and screen technology at the beginning and that is a not to be missed attraction even if it's your first time and only time definitely go even when it's cold outside because that's absolutely incredible but that is it those are my rankings for the um rides at universal studios hollywood if you liked the video press that thumbs up let me know your rankings in the list in the comments below if you want to help out the channel you can subscribe consider subscribing that'd be amazing if you want to further help with the channel you can become a youtube member click that join button below and also check out my club 722 patreon account club patreon.com slash club 722 for perks and more thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys have a universal day